So what is DOTS to begin with? Well, DOTS is an acronym. It stands for Data Oriented Technology Stack. And it's a Unity specific implementation of a technology that's actually a couple decades old now. And that's data oriented design. Data oriented design originally came about as a byproduct of gaming consoles, of all things, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, where the demand for higher resolution 3D graphics caused a shortage of space in the consoles, both in power and just general space, cooling and things, for the CPU. So you had all this space dedicated to the GPU, not as much dedicated to the CPU, and largely that problem still persists today. So the question then became, at scale, when I've got all these things going on, how the heck do I keep myself from being bottlenecked by my CPU all the time? And so data-oriented design was what led to that solution. Unity has implemented DOTS, which consists of three core components. You have Burst, a specialized, very intelligent compiler that takes high-performance C-sharp code, a specialized subset of the C-sharp language, and translates it into SIMD MIMD assembly, actual vectorized native compiled assembly. So basically, you're not even in just-in-time compiled code anymore. You're in ahead-of-time compiled assembly code. Very small, very fast. To complement that, you also have the jobs piece. That is basically multi-threading made easy. It allows you to create these very simplistic structures, which I'll go into in a little bit more detail here later, that can then automatically take the work and distribute it across all of the threads available on your computer without you having to worry about race conditions or the complicated APIs surrounding spawning and correctly managing all those different threads. To encompass the use of both of these components, Unity developed the Entity Component System. And here's where things get really interesting. But before I dive into it, I want to talk about the problem it solves in a little more detail. So here we've got your standard layout for a Unity game object, right? A Unity game object often consists of a transform, a mesh filter, a mesh renderer, any colliders that you want on there, as well as all your different custom scripts for any custom logic that you're wanting to execute, right? Now, let's say I wanted to change the position of a given object in my scene. Let's say I had a grizzly bear that I wanted to have move around in a forest. Well, to do that, I would need to reference the grizzly bear game object, reference the transform within that game object, reference the position property of the transform of that game object, and then go ahead and change the value. You can already see where that starts to have problems. Because to change the position, which is really only three float values, takes up about 12 bytes total space, I have to fetch the entire transform, which is 40 bytes worth of space. But worst still, I have to fetch the entire game object's worth of space, which can start to add up extremely quickly. But let's go ahead and do best case scenario here. Let's say we only needed to fetch the transform. Even with that, if you look at these numbers that I posted here in the bottom right corner, as you start to scale up your experience, let's say 30,000 spaceships, right? You have 360 kilobytes of data that you actually care about. That's that position, right? But when you go to actually fetch all those transforms, it bloats to 1.2 megabytes. Times it by 10, and of course, it scales along with it, 300,000 spaceships, 3.6 megabytes, 12 megabytes as the actual cost, right? Now, you may say, why should I care? Well, here's why. Your average CPU, right? pulled this straight from the internet, the average CPU, the L2 cache, which is the memory that's actually on the chip, ranges between 256 kilobytes and 8 megabytes. So at that 300,000 spaceships, even if we're only fetching the transform data, we've already exceeded what most CPUs can handle at a given chunk of time or a given frame. What this causes is it causes your computer to now have to waste additional cycles just in trying to fetch additional data and reorganize itself to be able to do what you're wanting it to do. So how does DOT solve this? It seems simple, deceptively so, but it's actually quite genius. And that is you let data be data and you let the logic be logic. Anyone who's a programmer in this talk will understand the concept of object-oriented design, right? It's a staple. It's been around for so long. However, 
data-oriented design really breaks the mold in terms of going almost back to the roots of computers in general in how they like to think and operate. Instead of looking at things as complex objects with complex properties and relationships within themselves, let alone with other things, instead DOTS allows you to have these things called entities that can still have references to all kinds of different data points, but rather than storing the data on the entity itself, it just stores index values or pointers to where in these giant chunks of memory, their particular value that they care about lives. So to explain further, imagine if you will, you have all these game objects, that picture that I had before, right? I'm taking all the positions out of all the game objects and I'm lining them up in a perfect row, in a perfect row of contiguous memory, right? Same thing with the rotations, same thing with the scales and any other custom data that I care about. And so now when I wanna change positional data for 300,000 spaceships, instead of having to go and grab 300,000 worth of game object data from memory, I just go to the beginning of my positions array, grab a list of all the indexes I want to change, and just execute right through in a linear fashion. Make it faster still. With jobs, I can do that in parallel, meaning I can chunk out that pass in blocks of 4, 8, or 16 at a time across all the different threads on my CPU. What this results in is not only a massive decrease in the amount of data you actually need to fetch to do the workload, but also an extreme increase in the amount of efficiency in your code base. So here's a real world example. I went ahead and made a project. I call it Planet Dots. On the right, you have dots entities. On the left, you have traditional mono behavior game objects. On the left, I'm at 30,000 game objects, roughly about 5,000 per spaceship type, six different spaceships. And I'm averaging around 11 frames per second. Each of those game objects, I'm just doing a very simple orbital algorithm of just making sure that they are continuing to move around on the screen in their own custom self-contained path. I'm doing the same thing on the dots side on the right, but with 300,000 entities. Right? So 10 times the number of entities, and I'm still getting better frame rate. Right? This just shows that the mere switch from object-oriented design to data-oriented design for certain scaled workflows can see a tremendous increase in code efficiency and general performance. But I want to take it a step deeper. Let's take a look under the hood at what's actually going on on the right-hand side here, because you may be surprised. What's holding us up, what's, what's bogging us down to that 15 frames per second is not dots. It's not executing all the different positions and updating the information. This is straight from the Unity profiler. What's actually bogging us down here is that giant set of green at the top of the graph, which if you look at what it says there, it's waiting on the GPU. In fact, if you look at this arrow, that's the actual total amount of time that it's taking dots to update those 300,000 entities. So what's actually happening here, and, and I even pulled up Task Manager. My, my GPU was only at around 30-ish percent utilization. It's an RT, RTX 3060. And my CPU was barely sweating anything. That dots block there is about 2.8 milliseconds. The rest of it is the sheer amount of time it takes to query up all the spaceships that it wants to draw and send it down to the GPU for drawing. So that means if I didn't want to render anything at all, and I just wanted to track this purely as a simulation layer, I could easily scale well into the millions before I started to have any bog down whatsoever. In fact, I even pushed this same planet dots example well into the half a million mark and my frame rate only dropped to around 12, 12 frames per second, right? So I've shown you the wow. This is cool and all, but it's all about learning here in Metaverse Creators, right? So I want to take it a step deeper. We're going to dive into some code. And this may be a lot. It may be very tiny. Don't worry. I'm going to make this available to the community. But I just want to kind of talk through how you actually get started here. On the left. We have a function called spawn entities. This takes place inside a normal mono behavior script, right? So you're not doing anything too crazy here. 
All you're doing is you're using their custom API. I'm not going to dive into it line by line, happy to do so at a later date. But basically what you're doing is you're grabbing first your world that you want to spawn things in, because that's what Dots operates off of, is these concepts of worlds. You're grabbing the entity manager for that world. That acts as the bridge between mono behavior land and Dots land. And then you're creating what's called a entity command buffer. That's basically a queue, right? You're basically queuing up all the things you want the computer to do so that way you can execute it later on in the, in the script. After that, the spawning actually takes place in a multi-threaded fashion. So on the right here is the actual logic for calculating out all of the spawn points for each of the spaceships. Right, so I'm using some randomized values and some other things, but I want to point out here that code on the right, that's a struct that's inheriting from something called iJob Parallel 4, which means that entire block of code gets turned into vectorized assembly and spread out across all the threads in your CPU. And because it's using a command buffer, it's queuing up all the work to then be executed all at once after everything is done. So that means my startup time for those 300,000 entities was less than half a second. Compared to the 30,000 for game objects, the whole system bogged down and lagged and then kicked on. So that's great, right? OK, I've kind of shown you how to go ahead and spawn these out. But how do you actually do the movement? Well, that's fairly straightforward as well. Unity did a fantastic job. They have this thing called system base, right? It's a class. You inherit from it. It's going to give you an, uh, an onUpdate function. Inside this onUpdate function, this is using, again, entity component system. This is using the latest version of it. right? I wanted to make sure I was giving you the latest version of the APIs. All you have to do is call out an entities dot for each. That's it. That's the magic. You don't have to write any multi-threaded code. You don't have to worry about any mutexes or thread safe locks, none of that stuff. Entities dot for each, good to go. Inside that for each, you're going to create a lambda. The parameters to that lambda, right? So that's inside these first parentheses here. You're going to pass in what you actually care about. This turns into a SQL style query, right? So if you're familiar with databases, you're familiar with setting up a query, hitting the database, and coming back with what you actually care about. That's exactly what this is doing. So you're going to list out everything you care about. I care about translation, rotation, and then I've got these guys here that I custom wrote. So orbit angle, pre previous position, move speed, and radius. It's going to compile out a query, and then it's going to query against the dots world and say, OK, give me everything that qualifies for this. Furthermore, I could add to this by saying, I want to do a dot with any, a dot with all, dot with none, and I can really narrow in my query. And then for everything that qualifies, I'm executing this code. And again, you see that schedule parallel. It's happening multi-threaded, bursted, very performant, um, SIMD, MIMD style code. If you're not familiar with that, basically means that the assembler is able to chunk this out in blocks of four. Very powerful stuff. As for the data itself, remember I said components, the whole dot solution, it's about letting data be data, let logic be logic. Here in system base, there's no object here. It's strictly what I want to do. The C underscores are my components. That's just the data. You see in these additional pictures here, I'm inheriting from I component data. It's a struct, and it literally just has values. That's it. That's all that's in there. And so an entity knows what to do by pairing in different components that then qualify it to a systems query. And so by changing the components associated, you change which system executes on the entity, and that's how you get your logic. So I fully recognize this is very different from what we're used to. Fear not. A couple things I want to point out, and I'm going to wrap this. Dots is not a silver bullet. If you're small scale, it's not going to help you. This is going to help you where you are dealing with a lot of data and a lot of logic. The more, the better. On average, you'll get double to 10 times the increase in performance when done correctly. You don't need to be all in or nothing. You can have object-oriented and dots working side by side. You just have to be careful how you handle that bridge. And don't be afraid to use jobs on their own. As for learning this, got you covered there as well. We've got the Dimension X blog. I shortened the URL there just so that way you guys can type it in a little easier. And I've also got some pictures here. I've got Data Oriented Design, the book, Pro.net Memory Management on the right. Turbo Makes Games has awesome tutorials on YouTube. 
and then go to our blog and you'll have everything you need to get started. And that in a nutshell is DOTS. Thank you for your time, everybody.